Hello everyone, it's Leo, and today we're going to talk about episode 43, the start of the last battle of Healing Good. Actually, I thought it was going to be the start of the last battle, and in a way it was, but it was more of a battle against Shindo Ine, which was the MVP of this episode in my opinion. Let's just say this, she was a great villain in this episode and I loved her so much, but I have lots of feelings towards this episode, so let's talk about it. We first start with this the city at Tsukoyaka City being infected and everything has been infected. So Shinoini shares the plan of King Byogen that he infected lots of small places and now the infection is growing. The elements are suffering, the people are suffering. Interesting that uh, we were able to see some characters that we previously saw in the season before in this moment. It's nice, it was like a nice touch to the story we had so far. And so the girls are ready to fight against King Byogen. And they're scared because the whole world can be infected. And so they start fighting. Obviously, they can't do anything, so they jump, there's a barrier, and right then, right at the start, the girls fall down and Earth doesn't. Like, this is, okay, I'm, 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 I have to say this. I'm a little tired of this, honestly. I know Cure Earth is way stronger than the other girls. I know that, I understand it, but it's old already. Like, can't they get stronger and be on the same level as Earth already? They've been around for a long time now. It's the last battle of the series. Can't they stand on even ground with Earth? But no, they can't. And so they get beaten, they try to use the elements, they can't do anything, and they get detransformed. Like, they were hit once by King Pyokia, and they got detransformed. When I saw this, I was like, I can't believe this. I cannot believe this. And I feel like this episode was divided into two parts. This first part, which was the fight against King Byogen, and the second part, which was the fight against Shindoine. And I felt like they didn't have enough to fill this first part, so they had to show the girls lying down. So they had to show Nodoka. They had to show Chiyu. They had to show Hinata. They had to show Asmi. They had to show each and every one of them. This, this, this part dragged so much, and then we saw Shindoine getting lot, trying to get Latte, and then with that in this scene, we had to see Noroka, Chiyu, Hinata, Asumi, all of them desperate because she was gonna get latte. We didn't need that. We really didn't need this drama, and I I have the feeling that they were trying to get time, you know, they needed to fill this first part with something and they didn't know what to do, and they felt they filled with this. But then, what happened after was very nice. We had our queen, the beautiful, the awesome, the amazing Tatinu joining in. And I really loved her participation. Girl, she is everything. And, and the interesting thing she did, the ultimate interesting thing she did, like the girls saw her for the first time. Again, a little tiring. All the girls looking and, oh my God. Like, couldn't they be all together laying down, lying down like, close to each other so that they could... Uh, work on other scenes so they would react all at the same time, but no. Just putting this picture here because I thought Rabidin was cute and I love Rabidin. But then the most important thing was that um, Teatinu with the other healing animals used their powers to create a big barrier. We were able to see some other healing animals too in this scene. I liked it. And this barrier stopped King Byogen. I was okay with this. I was fine with this, but I wanted to see more of King Byogen, actually. I was expecting to see a little bit more of him, maybe his story or something. And now it feels like since it's in this episode we got nothing, it's all crammed into one episode next week, so I'm a little scared. And then Shindoini was there, okay, I'm gonna get you, girl, and he said, no, she's my prey. Why? I know, they had a past, they had a battle, why is he so adamant on destroying uh, Teachinu himself. Like, what is going on there, King Byogen? Is it just because she defeated you last time you battled against her? Or is there something more down there we still don't know? What is happening? So Shindoini 
wants to attack uh, Tatanu, but she can't because King Bjorgen wants her. And so she's like, okay, you want her, but you don't want the cure, so I'm going to attack the cures. And she did, but Asumi was able to take the girls away and take her, take the girls to a secure place that was not infected. So they started talking. Here is, I think, where the episode got really interesting. And I really liked this part of this episode. So um, she, she shared her plan with the girls. And I was just like Hinata in this scene. I was like, I didn't understand a thing of this plan. Can you explain it to me again? And so uh, we had that great scene with uh, Nyatoren explaining what, what actually was supposed to happen. And I was like, okay, this is too absurd. This is not going to happen. They're not going to go through with this plan. And Nodoka, obviously, the first one to go, the first one to run and, you know, tell her, girl, you're not going to do this. You're not going to uh, hurt yourself this way. I've been through this. I know how it feels. You're not doing this at all. But Asumi was adamant. And even Lati shared her feelings, which was another nice thing. Because... Honestly, as I tend to say, Latte is just there for the most part of the season. She never really participates in anything except getting sick, but she never really participates in anything. So when there's a chance, I really like when she does. And it was cute having her share her feelings towards Asumi. Um, obviously, it's very... The, the difference between her relationship with Asumi and the other girls with their healing animals is very obvious. Like, they didn't work very well with Asumi and Latte and their bond. But, and I and I feel like what Latte said to her in this episode is a little too late, but better late than never. So, Latte shared her feelings too. Girl, don't go. You're my, my partner. You're my beloved partner. And I want to be with you. Don't hurt yourself. Don't endanger yourself like that. And Asumi understood everyone's feelings. But she said something very like very akin to what Nodoka said last episode. This is my body. This is a decision that I have to make. And I will make this decision. And it was nice that Asumi kind of opened up as well. Asumi did not have an episode of her own like the other girls. So it's nice that she had a moment for herself in this episode. I feel like it was more or less kind of like Hinata's episode, which didn't really feel like a Hinata episode. But I think Hinata had a little bit more focus than Asumi did in this one. But it's nice that Asumi had a moment for herself to show uh, what she is feeling and how he how she feels about the experiences she went through with the girls from this season. It was sweet, it was nice, and she ended up deciding that she was gonna do it nonetheless. So they needed Shindoine's power. And so Shindoine appeared and she started fighting with the girls and she infected herself with mega parts. Girl, I love this look for her. Uh, it's very sad that it it really didn't live for long you know she was purified in this episode so it didn't live for long and the fighting scene was super super cool even though the drawings were not perfect the choreography was 100 percent i loved this fighting scene so much and i need to say this i really need to say this I always thought that Shindoini was going to be the first villain to be purified. I thought that she was going to be the most useless villain. I thought that she was going to do nothing. She surprised me because she is the last one standing. She is the one that had the most the most interesting fight against the girls uh, out of the three villains. Except for Batatemoda. Batatemoda had some interesting fights too. Especially with Cure Earth when Cure Earth joined. But, you know, in this final arc... We, we didn't even have a big fight against Guairu. And the fight against Daruzin was nice. But this fight against Shindoine was nicer. It was super, super nice. And Shindoine is like a funny character nonetheless. She doesn't want to be funny. But she ends up being funny with her ways. And because of that, I feel like it was very uh, on place for her demise to be with Kira Sparkle saying, oh, look, there's King Byogen. And she's like, no, that's not King Byogen. And he's not called King Byogen. He's now King Byogen. And I would never fall for that. And then she did fall for that. And the girls were ready to purify her. And they did purify her, but not really. She just lost the mega evolutions that she got. 
Now she was regular Shindorine. And then uh, for this moment, it was also interesting that Latte spoke for the first time. Girl, we were waiting for this moment. It happened. A little too late, but it happened. And uh, she said Oasis. So the girls were ready to, to use the healing Oasis attack. They used it. It was very nice the way uh, Earth held her. And then she got purified. Interesting what she actually became. She became a nanobiogen with her hair and her facial expressions. Cute. And I, I believe that we're, we might be able to see Guairu and Daru isn't this way too. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe with their final power, they're going to be able to create those little nanobiogens, turn those little nanobiogens into uh, a corporeal form. I'm not going to call them humans, but a corporeal form that doesn't need to infect other people to live nicely. And so Cure Earth infected herself basically at the end and she, they, she's ready to go and they're going to uh, go for their last fight. So, okay. I think this was a half and half episode, half good, half more or less. Uh, I, I really liked the second half of this episode. It was very, very nice. The first half, I, I feel like the first half dragged on a lot. And we're talking about the last fight of Healing Good. And, you know, we're, it didn't really feel like it was in the last arc. You know, uh, and I was really expecting for us to see more of King Byogen during this fight, during this episode. Actually, I'm, I'm glad with the way things went with Shin Domini because I liked it. But I'm still a little disappointed that we're not seeing much of King Byogen himself. I'm also disappointed that the girls feel too weak and they can't fight back no matter what, and obviously things are going to happen in the next episode, and they are going to do something, and uh, Cure Earth, she is she going to sacrifice herself, is she going to disappear, what is going to happen, I don't think she will, I think she will be able to to fight against King Byogen out, outside of that barrier that he created and that they can't get in, she will be able to go there, she will get defeated, but she won't like lose her corporeal form or anything like that. She will participate in the last moment of the battle together with the girls. And they're probably fighting in the healing good style because we haven't seen them fighting in that style yet. And it usually happens in the last fight, which is probably next episode. But I feel like there are so many things to happen next episode. I, I wonder if they're going to be able to cram it all into one episode or they're not touching certain topics. What I would like to see next episode is King Byogen's Origins. Maybe we're going to see something like that. Maybe not. I don't know. But I would love to see his origins. I would also like to see an answer for the reason as well, because the reason... Uh, the, the last thing he said before he got purified by the girls is important somehow. And I, I, I'm really curious to see what that is going to mean for him and how that is, if that is going to play something. Because I, if, if, that was, if that's not going to be a catalyst for something that's going to happen in the future, why was it there in the first place? You know, that, that's how I feel about the reason and his existence. Uh, also, another thing I want to see is the girls fighting with the healing style. I really want to see that. And a little bit more of Teatinu fighting too. Or maybe the original Cure Earth appearing in a sort of flashback or something. I really wanted to see how King Byogen was defeated for the first time. I wonder if he was defeated uh, with the same plan Cure Earth is using now, or if he was defeated by some other way. And I just I was I just wanted to see how he was defeated. But I don't think we're getting much because next episode, like we need to cram everything. We need to close everything probably. Because in episode uh, 45, which is the last episode, the girls are going to go to the healing garden. And it's probably going to be an epilogue like the other seasons. I don't think the fight will go on until the the end maybe the the villains are going to be able to live in the healing garden i don't know i'm just 
confused. Oh, and there was one thing that uh, King Byogen said at, in this episode too that made me wonder. He when he's when he was in Sukoyaka City and he started uh, uh, spoiling everything. He started uh, using his powers. He said something like, "Here's where uh, Teachinu was born." And also the first cure was born too. Because we know the first cure was born in Sukoyaka. But is Teatinu's origins from Sukoyaka too? Is, isn't she from the Healing Garden? Or is the Healing Garden in Sukoyaka but in like a parallel dimension or something? What is happening? And I really wanted a little more on the lore of Healing Good and on the lore of King Byogen. And I wonder if we're getting that next episode just very curious. Anyways, as I said, my opinion on this episode, half and half. The first half, meh. The second half, love. <laughs> Anyways, this was my opinion on episode 43. We're very, very close to the end of Healing Good, so let's see what we have ahead of us. I want to take this little time to thank the members of the Magical Cinnamon channel. If you are a member, I really, really appreciate your support. I really appreciate that you believe in Magical Cinnamon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time. Bye-bye.